this is very confusing sometimes, you know, pericarditis and endocarditis. Um, the best way is to draw your heart, okay? He has vessels, like three vessels. But the heart has different stretches. So the muscle, this muscle, I'll just draw it separate here. It's three layers. So there's a, there's a layer that is outside. We call it the pericardium. Then there's a layer that is inside. And the red layer, the endocardium. So this is pericardium. This is the myo, that's the muscle. And the inside layer is the endo. endocardium. So basically, this problem, these two problems you see is due to which layer of the heart is affected. Okay, pericardium, when the pericardium is affected, you develop pericarditis, okay? If the endocardium is affected, is endocarditis. Okay, it can be an autoimmune problem. Usually, the pericarditis it can be autoimmune problem, or it can be sometimes infection, some viral infection, or cancer. Any of them can cause inflammation and cause the problem here. Endocarditis usually something is coming to the heart, is in the blood, it's being transmitted. Um, and so mostly it's an infectious problem, but it can also be autoimmune, okay? So infections like a bacteremia, you know, somebody had infection in their skin, it go into the blood. This is why we treat every infection you have that go into your, to prevent it going into your blood. When it gets into your blood, it goes into the heart and then the valves get into inf affected. So there's valves in your heart, they get affected and then they involve the layer of the heart. That's so, that's the, the main idea of the problem. Now you have to know what to do with them. The symptoms each of them is going to have is different, okay? Um, the symptoms is different. The pericardium, if it's affected, it gets taken. So this is pericarditis. It gets taken. And it, it, it becomes really hard. It affects heart movement. So when it gets taken, as the patient take a deep breath, they start having what? Chest pain. They start having chest pain. And you can hear it. It's the sound. It's like a clicking sound. This, the, the pericardium rub itself against each other, and you have this friction rub. This is a buzzword. There's a friction rub giving you a clicking sound. Buzzword, friction rub is always something whenever they're going to talk about pericarditis. And you hear it. And then the, the, as you listen to the patient, and they can start having pain. In order to prevent the pain or relieve this pain, what they do is they lean forward. When they lean forward, they open the cavity where the heart is located, uh, the pericardial cavity, okay? And so the heart can slide back and forth without rubbing against that friction rub and their pain get better. And this is classic. This is what you teach them. You don't even have to teach them. The patient will come to you and they say, hey, when I take a deep breath, it hurts. Uh, but when I lean forward, that is your buzzword. Pain, chest pain, that is relieved by leaning forward. It's always pericarditis until proving otherwise. There's nothing. In this way, that does that. You make your diagnosis right away, or you educate them to do that, right? Then when they come to you, you got to find the 
cause of it. So you got to do a bunch of investigation. This is what you expect. When you get when they give you a lab work, don't freak out. Okay, it's an infection. So as you see what? High WBC, right? As you see fever. Is that a problem? No, this is not a B-sharp movement. Why can't fever? I don't care about it. Okay. They will give you signs of infection. ESR is elevated. I don't care about it. CRP, don't pick it. It's an expected finding. If they give you a case, yeah, it's a which you have to follow up on it. Yeah, this one you follow because that's what the case is usually is like things that will help you make a diagnosis. These are hard, but if said, what is the B sharp moment? Priority? No, this is not fine. This is all fine. But in the case, you got to pick it because uh, pick them because that will help you make the diagnosis, which are the five things I worry some here. All of them shows that they're making diagnosis of pericarditis. Right, so all these things will give you, then they will get the EKG. So EKG, what do I expect in this? ST elevation, but you got to rule out if it's MI. How do I rule out? It's diffused all the leads of ST elevation. So this is two buzzwords I've given you, EKG, with diffuse ST elevation, pain relief uh, by leaning forward. It's always, this is the two diagnosis that will give you pericarditis. ST elevation, you worry, oh, this is patient have a heart attack? No, but all the leads uh, will show ST elevation. And then you make your diagnosis that this is pericarditis, right? Treatment, we just give you some medication. Treatment is NSAIDs, sometimes steroids. And NSAID, the good one is uh, cochicine. You already know about it. But you can, if they, there's no cochicine in the answer choice, um, yeah, you pick an NSAID. Don't limit yourself. Cochicine is the treatment of choice. But you can pick NSAID. If, it doesn't resolve, they have to do pericardiectomy. Basically, they have to um, remove the pericardium. This is the last result. And that is the, the whole thing about this. No, I'm not done. I'm giving you the last B-sharp moment. What is the major complication with this? Okay, the problem is the heart is being squeezed. It's being squeezed. It can pump as the as the yellow thing gets taken. The heart cannot squeeze anymore. It get into trouble, and therefore things will slow down. If the heart stops squeezing, the classic symptoms is this. This is what will happen. Look at it. They start having muffled heart sound. They have JVD and hypotension. Yeah, breath sound will be normal. So that's the trap. So breath sound is okay. What is this? What is the diagnosis? Help me out there. What have they developed? Muffle heart sound, JVD. I forget one, I can pad one. Narrow pulse pressure, if that can help you. The yeah, systolic blood pressure get closer to the diastolic. What have they developed? Cardiac tamponade, excellent. It's cardiac tamponade. So they've developed cardiac tamponade. So the major complication of pericarditis is cardiac tamponade. So that is what you should worry. So you have uh, narrow, pause pressure, and this is cardiac internal. Okay, and that is everything about it. So if they give you a patient, who do you see? Somebody with pericarditis and pain is relieved by um, leaning forward, don't pick it. 
somebody with pericarditis has a fever, don't pick it. It's not somebody you should see. Pericarditis with ST elevation, don't pick it. Even though they will tell you, I have chest pain that is relieved by leaning forward and my ST elevation in all leads, don't pick it. That is a trap. The only time you pick a pericarditis as a problem is when they develop what? Tempana. Patient with pericarditis or patient with chest pain, they won't tell you it's pericarditis. You have to make, they say chest pain with diffuse ST elevation. They lean forward, pain is relieved, and they have a muffled heart sound. Yes, I got to see them. They have what? Hypertension. Yes, I got to see them. They have JVD. Yes, they've developed cardiac tamponade. Those patients we have to see. And that is what you do. Okay. So pay, this is the left one. I, this, these guys, anybody with pericarditis and has any of this, it's a B-sharp moment. Okay. Any question? That's the, uh, that's the key for this. I'm going to clean it up if you don't have any questions. Okay, now, endocarditis, the inside lining. I told you mostly blood bone and diseases can bring it and you get infected. I try to, I, I, there's an easy way you can remember this. Sometimes when they give you a case, it may be IV drug user. Okay, somebody who you should drug, they, they have staph infection and they get into their blood, they get into trouble. They develop sepsis and then they develop endocarditis. Okay, um, that is very, very important. The best way to remember them is I call them if you develop pericarditis, you get a letter from Jane. From Jane. And this will give you all the signs and symptoms of um, that is the best way you can remember them because there's a bunch of them. So from Jane, if you develop endocarditis, Jane will send you a letter. So he will say from Jane, okay? And F is fever, it's an infection, okay? The R is rot spot. So the retina, if you look at the retina, there's hemorrhage there. It's because of the uh, um, emboli. So let me explain it, I don't want to like, I mean, I have a video, it has all this in detail. So if this is the valve and then you have this vegetation on it, the problem is, is going to emboli. Every bacteria, every um, tissue on the endocardium can embolize. And when they embolize, it can go to any organ under this earth. So all these are organs. And so you can have signs and symptoms from any organ and that is what Jane, Jane, Jane is telling you, me pericarditis, I'm sending you a letter going everywhere in the body. So that's the way I remember them. So rot spots um, is fine in the retina. So you go into the retina. So, so this is on the retina. When you look into the eyes, Jane is sending letter to every place under the sun. The O is Oslo nodes. You look at your fingernails, you see this a spot there. Um, then M, the, the, the valve on the, the valve is self destroying it, they have Atmam, okay? That is from Jane. And the J, Jane itself, I call them Jane Wei, Jane Wei lesions. And if you look in the palm, in the ASO, you see the hemorrhage, palm and so. Okay, and then it's not, she's not done yet. A, because of the chronic infection, they have, and you have what we call anemia or chronic disease. The bacteria you keep on chewing all the, your uh, ion. So they develop anemia of chronic disease. And the N, if you look at your nail belt, they have hemorrhage. So nail belts, which is the splinter hemorrhage, you know that, right? So they have a splinter. So nail belt.
And the lastly, E is the emboli. The main problem is Jane send emboli to all his friends. So this is how you can remember signs and symptoms of endocarditis. They're going to have fever. If you look at the person, their body, um, they have retinal hemorrhage and their fingernails, they will have a mama. Um, they have the apartment, so you see small, small hemorrhages everywhere. They have anemia, and then they have all this. And that is what the question would be. And they say which of signs and symptoms is consistent with that. Okay. The um the the the, the problem is. They have to know what to do. So treatment is a long-term antibiotic, usually six weeks, but they have high recurrence such that they may need multiple IV antibiotic. And that's the everything about this problem. So what do you think they are risks of? They can get stroke. If this get into their brain, they get stroke. So this patient, uh, at work, they had a risk for stroke. And so in order to prevent recurrent infection, whenever they have a dental procedure, they need antibiotic. Okay. Because they've developed this infection before, so they'll get prophylaxis for antibiotic as soon as possible. Any question? This is endocarditis, very straightforward um, and very, very important, something you're supposed to know. 